Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Now I missed last week because I wanted to do a video on the TW file, which is a way to transmit a file over the serial port. And I had some problems with it and it kind of led me down a road that I didn't know existed. And I, so I found this uh, rec mod or receive mode, I think. I'm not exactly sure what R-E-C-M-O-D means. But it led me to this command, and so I thought, well, I'm going to do this command, and then I'm going to move into the TW file. But there's a lot to go with the serial port, and this uh, RECMOD command is a pretty interesting one. So I wanted to do a video on it and some of the things that go with it. Now, in the Arduino, we're not going to change anything on the main page of the standard layout I have. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to run the delay every five seconds and we're just going to do commands in the delay tab. On this page is where we're going to have the commands that are going to send something up to the Nexion to operate on. And we're just going to start by setting a text field called T1 and we're going to set it equal to updated. So every five seconds we're going to send the word updated and replace whatever text is in t1.text with updated. Now we'll go over to the next one. Now there's a lot on this page and we'll get to it a little bit at a time. But for right now, this is the field, this t1 field. I'll run this in debug just to show you that it's actually working at this point. And for anybody that's not familiar with um, debug, you just go down here you have to select the serial port. You'll see that I have two. One is for programming the Arduino, and then one is a separate connection I have coming off the Arduino. And you just hit start. And then you'll see over here what we have coming in. And we have updated. And you'll see every time it comes up, it changes this to updated. And then I have it going back to hello, and we'll go over that here in a minute, just to show you that it is working every time that we send the command, it changes it to updated. And in order to see changes on T1, I have two timers down here. I have timer one set for every 3.5 seconds, it's going to output the word hello or write hello to the same one. And so that way we can see a change so we know that something's happening. And we'll go over timer two or timer zero in a little bit. But I'm going to go over this command button here next. And what we have is when this is zero, we're going to have this command or this RECMOD equal to zero, and we're going to have the text display commands. Because what this RECMOD command does is when it's set to zero, it treats the incoming serial port as if there are commands coming in. And when it's set to one, it's just going to treat it as data and fill a buffer, and then we'll have to decide what to do with that data. It'll be easier if I show you, so I'm going to um, go to that next. The other thing is down here on this N1, I have it showing whatever state RC mod is. And you can see it right here, N1.val RC mod. And it's on this timer and it's going to run every 400 milliseconds. Ignore this N0 for right now. We'll come back to that. We'll connect to this again. And we'll see the data start to come in. And you can see that it's a command and it changes that to updated. But when I change the RC command to just being data, you can see that it stays hello. And you can see that this number increments. I'm going to stop it. And it went up 19 every time that it went through this. And this is 19 characters long. And you have to include those FFs because it's just looking as bytes. I guess not characters. Think of it as bytes. So the serial port is just going to continue to grow as we send data to it. But it's not going to treat these as commands. It's just going to store it. It's not going to do anything with it. We'll start it again. And I'm keeping track of the buffer of how many characters are right here. So if I go back to commands again, it'll treat it as updated. If I go back to this, it'll start loading this up again. 
and the usize is a system variable in the Nexion display and it contains the current size of the buffer. And we're going to use this load button and it's going to load data into T3. And we'll use this erase button to erase data when we get to that point. So we'll start with the load button and we're going to do it on touch release. Now I've noticed whenever they're dealing with the buffer they add this U in front of it. So in this case we're going to take U copy and I'll delete some of the, I'll go back so we can see the what Nexion has for their um, tips. So it's U copy and then the attribute of where we want to place the data we're collecting. And then the starting location in the buffer, and we're going to start at zero. So that'll be the, the initial byte that's stored there. And then how many characters do we want to copy? In this case, we're just going to do one. And then what's interesting is they allow you to set the starting bit over here on T3 or the starting location. We're going to keep that zero for now, but you can play with that later if you want. And now we're going to load this, and every time we press this button, it should load a character into this T3. So we have the data coming in here. We're going to hit this commands, and now we'll see this starting to climb. And when I hit load, that was the first letter in this T1.txt. Now if I hit load again, initially I thought that it would go to the next letter, but it doesn't. By copying the data out, you don't do anything. This buffer is still going to keep climbing. You have to manually delete the data from the buffer. But first, let's go back to the Arduino, because instead of sending a command, we're just going to send a, a text string. So over here in our delay tab, instead of sending the command like we did up here, we're just going to serial to print the word test2. And over here, since test2 is five characters long, we're going to change this to five. So now we're going to copy five characters into this location, this T3. So you can see down here we're just sending that test2 over and over and over. I'm going to switch this over so it's not looking at it as a command. It's looking at it as data. And see we have five bytes here. And the next time it'll go to 10, it'll just keep adding to that buffer. When I hit load, now we've loaded test 2 over here. We could have easily put it up here. So the thing I like about this is maybe there's a way to cut down on the length of data being sent between the two devices. Now we're going to do a little more with this load and erase. We're going to change it back to where we'll load one character at a time into the T3 box. And then we're going to take the T2 box and we're going to concatenate onto that so it'll slowly grow. And I'm going to do this so I can show it to you in a little slower way by bringing one character at a time and adding it. But then we're going to have to come up with a way to erase T2. So on this erase button, we're just going to set T2 equal to nothing. So now I'm going to show this to you again in debug. It looks like I have an error. I didn't add that T to the end. Okay, you can see we've got the test 2 coming through. I'm going to switch it to the data, and I'm going to hit load. But you can see it just keeps adding that T to it, and that's because we're looking at the first character in the buffer, and it's a T every single time. So what we have to do is we have to come up with a way to remove that first character so that after we've used it, it clears that. And you'll see why later, because the buffer only has a certain amount of space. So we're going to do that next. And you do that by adding the udelete command. And you'll notice that u, it's always in the front of it. And so these commands only, you, only work when that receive mode is set to 1. Otherwise, these will not work to pull the data out. But that udelete, 
equal to 1. So every time we pull one character off, we're going to delete one character. We can delete more than one, and we'll get to that later. But for now, we're just going to, after we pull it, we'll delete it. So it should go on to the next character. So now we have five characters in our buffer. We load that T, and we should have deleted it. And now we've got an EST2. And since it's doing it over and over, we'll get that same over and over and over. I must have went too far on that one. Let's erase it. And if you clear it out, it just repeats that same one over and over again because the buffer was empty. So it must have just retained the last value. So that's kind of interesting too. And now I'm going to show you a somewhat of an example of where this might come in handy. Before we were sending a command to set this equal to update, I believe is what it was saying. And now we're going to set up to set t2 equal to something. So if this u size is greater than 4 or 5, because I'm sending 5 characters at a time, we're going to change t2 to be equal to more than 4 so the text in it. So we're going to, instead of sending a command directly from the Arduino, we're just going to send text to it, and when that size exceeds a certain thing, we'll have a reaction on the Arduino, or on the Nexion. Now I'll admit this isn't the most sophisticated um, example, but it is, a, it is an example of what you can do. So right now it's looking at it as a command, so it's not going to make this use size do anything, but if I set that RC mode equal to 1, that went up to 5, and then it says more than 4. So you do have to wait for the timer to execute, so there was a little bit of a delay, but this is an example of where you could do that. Or you could have a button press that would say, if if the state of this, or or if the string currently in there, you could pull 5 characters out, Kind of like when I send the data to the Arduino, I have a set size. Well, if I knew all the commands coming from the Arduino are a set size, I could do the same thing. I could pull five characters off. If it's this, then do this. Okay, now over in the Arduino, we're going to set the delay down to one second. And we're going to send it a very long string. And we're just going to send it the alphabet in lowercase and uppercase. And I'm going to remove this portion right here because I don't want it to uh, execute that. We can leave the hello every once in a while because we're not using T1 now anyway. And now the point of this example is to send a bunch of data. You can see that the size of the buffer is a set size. And you can see that it stops at 1023. Now, the question I had, is it dropping off at the beginning or the end? If we're adding fresh data onto the end and dropping off the old data, and I load a character, what would happen is the next time it went around, you could see it went up to 1023 again. This would be off a little bit, I would think. So the B would get dropped off because I eliminated the A, and then I decreased one. So it wouldn't be in sync, but as I load, you can see that it stays in sync. And if I erase this, you can see that it's still MNNOP. So now I'm going to make another little change. When I clear this T2 field, I'm also going to U-delete 1,020, and the old one was 1,023, so it'll leave three bytes on there. So now I have 1,023 bytes in my buffer. So what's happening to the additional bytes that are still coming in? I believe they're just being discarded, because I'm going to erase this. And you can see it went down to 3, and now it's building back up. And now as I load them, we're going to get those last 3 bits that were on there, or bytes. 
and see then it went back down to A. So it put those three and then went and started over. So I think that what's happening is once it's full you just start losing things. So if you are going to do it this way you have to pay attention and use gather the bytes before you start losing them. Okay, now I'm going to set the timer to be every 10 seconds because there's one state that that concerned me on this. And that's if if you were to set it to the the mode of not being commands from the Arduino and then you wanted to set it back to the mode of being commands from the Arduino, you'd have no way to do it because once you've set it to not being commands, you're just sending it strings and that's the way the action's treating it. So if you were to say RC mode equal to zero, it would just take it as text. But fortunately, Nexion does have a way to set it back manually. And that's sending it this string, and you have to add the end characters. So even if it is in the mode where it's looking for strings, if you send it this string, it should kick it out of the mode and put it back to zero where it's commands again. And the reason that I set it for every 10 seconds is um, that'll help show what I'm talking about. So you can see I have that string coming through and it's a command and for this command since it does have those three FFs at the end it's treating it as if it doesn't know what it is. So when I go to commands and it's a string hopefully you won't see an error be replied by. And you can see here you did not see that error. It treated it as a command or as text. And now the next time it comes through you'll see that the error comes back. So I'm going to clear this again. I don't have it set to automatically change the button, but I do have this down here. So when I put this to the mode, and now it's in that rec mode equal to 1, when the next time it sends a command it should change that to 0, and it does. So you can see it in two different ways. You can see that it changed the mode to 0, and we didn't really get an error because it was just looking for a string. But now that it's set to zero, it's going to look for a command, and it says, I don't know what that command is, so it reports an error. So we do have a way that you could send that same command you could send this REC MOD equal to one from the Arduino, and that would put it into the mode of looking for only strings. And then, when you wanted to go back to commands, you could send that long string, and it would set it back to art rec mode zero and start looking for commands. So just for a little quick recap, you would use this rec mode to set zero or one to set it for the mode. Zero is command, one is just strings. You use the u size to show you how many bytes currently need to be processed. You can use that U copy to take the bytes from the buffer and move them into a string. And you can use that U delete then that will move the pointer. It's, it, it points at a certain location. It's really 1024 because it starts at zero. That's how many bytes. And it just kind of is a circle and it overwrites upon itself. So that U delete just moves the pointer. But I find it easier to just think it's dropping it off one side and adding it to the other. I haven't looked at how to do anything with numbers yet. I have a feeling I'd bring it in as a string and then convert it to a number using the COVAX or something like that. Or maybe there's a way to bring a value in and read it. Like I said, I haven't gone into that yet. I'm just getting into this portion of looking at the buffer this way. But I find it very interesting and I think we can come up with some, some interesting ways to use this. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.